Okay, students, uh, this next couple of um, programs we're going to do are going to be on God's plan for weight maintenance. There's many things that we can do about weight, um, but I'm just going to talk about a couple. And so first thing I want to start with uh, is Obesity America. I actually think that the main reason for obesity in America is that portions are bigger. We've lost track of how much we're eating. So we'll see if you agree with that uh, once we get done with this. But I want to go through this slide on obesity trends. And um, what obesity trend shows, this is 1985. All this white is dated. It's not there. So we're going to get up to 90. And this is from the Centers for Disease Control. You can actually go to the CDC and just type in obesity trends. You'll get all this information. So here's 1990, that's just 30 years ago. 30 years ago and every place in the country was less than 14% obese. We're just gonna run through this 30 years really quickly. Here's 91, it jumps to 15 to 19%, almost always down here in West Virginia first. 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, it jumps to 20% again down here in the South. 98, 99, 2000, 2001, it jumps to 25%. 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, it jumps to 30%, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, um, 2010, 2011, they changed the system to mess with. But really, you'll see right here, it's still 30 to 35% in this area, this light uh, kind of a tan color. And then we go to 2012, 2013, once again, Mississippi, West Virginia jumped to 35% obesity in 2013. 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18. <clears throat> so I wanna run through this one more time. Uh, that's kind of amazing. I wanna follow a couple things. You can follow your state if you want. Here's 1990 again, all less than 15%. Now some of them way over 35%. 91, 92, 93, 94. It's always the, the South in the, in the Midwest going first, 95, 96, 97. Again, the South and the Midwest, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, the South and the Midwest. You'll notice that Colorado is the only state that hasn't turned yet. So 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, Colorado is the last one hanging in there again, 2006, 2007, 2008. And then they legalized marijuana and they got the munchies. It's probably not true. I have no idea if that's true, actually. So my point here is, is that what's the difference between those states in the South and the Midwest compared to places like Colorado? 2010, 2011, then it jumps to these new colors, but you see that the first one to switch is West Virginia and Mississippi. All right, here's my question. What has happened since 1990? That's only 30 years. What has happened? We've been in this country for hundreds of years. The country's been around for thousands of years. Um, and it's not just the United States. So what is going on? This is other countries. Here's Afghanistan. Well, they're kind of low because they're in war all the time and they're just it's poverty stricken. Here's Italy. Well, those poor poverty stricken people, they don't know how to eat, they don't know how to live, they're poor Italians. No, they're, they're one of the main cuisines in the world, Italian cuisine, but they're still down at 20%. What are they doing? Well, we'll talk about a little bit of that, but Germany then, Nicaragua, Greece, Ireland, Canada, Saudi Arabia, the United States. So we're not the heaviest people in the world. And uh, Nero. 60% obese. <laughs> these, these countries, Amer this is Samoa. American Samoa is up even above that. And uh, those Samoans, because they were always just running around in the jungles, knocking things, hunting, gathering, trying to gather stuff. And then Western food came in. <laughs> Their bodies couldn't handle it uh, like Americans can. All right. So today, then, what we're going to talk about, portion size, I think, is the big thing. That's done. What's changed in 30 years? Portion size, package size, the size and shape of containers, there's many other things. People criticize me all the time saying, you forgot my thing. And, and I know I will, but I wanna concentrate on what I think is the main thing. Cause as Kenneth Hagin said, you gotta keep the main thing, the main thing. Cause if you don't, then you're in deep trouble. So we're gonna look at portion size. Hopefully you will be convinced when I get done with this. So portion distortion is a problem. <clears throat> you can see this, this was done by uh, Young and Nestle back in 2003. So it's comparing sizes back in the middle of the last century to 2002. And you can see that the original Hershey bar was 0.6 ounces. It was about this big, little Hershey bar, two bites. 
And now it's one, two, four, six, eight. It's half of a pound. So <laughs> you've seen those Hershey bars. You're checking out and they're staring at you in the face. You know, look at this big Hershey bar. And so I buy one. I think, you know what? I'm going to make this last for like a month. And it's a good deal. So I get a lot of chocolate. It's cheap. And I sit down in front of the TV and you crack off the corner and you eat it and go, man, that was a pretty good bite. I'm just going to have one more bite. And then the show's over and the whole stinking half a pound of chocolate is gone. And I don't know who ate it, but it was probably me. So same thing with all of this. Beer is the same way. Fries used to be two ounces. Now they're a half of a pound. Burgers, same thing. They're up to a half of a pound. <laughs> Sodas, who knows where they'll end up. So 32 is a quart. And so this is more than a quart in a soda. So portions have gotten bigger. I think that's the main thing that's caused all of this obesity. It's not the only thing. The average cookie 20 years ago, this is, you can find this in the National Heart, Lung, and Blood, Blood Institute. It's portion distortion. So 20 years ago, 55 calories. Now, uh, 275 calories. Things are getting bigger. And then 20 years ago, here's a cheesecake at 260 calories, and now 640. But you've been to Cheesecake Factory. I know you have. And they're, they're twice that size. The desserts can be 1,000 plus calories easily in some of those places. And then the muffin. Do you remember the little muffin you used to get? Just a nice little muffin, 210 calories, one and a half ounces. Now they're 500 calories and they're four ounces. And I can't tell you how many people, when I talk to them, what you have for breakfast? And they think they're doing really good. And they say, yeah, I had a bagel for breakfast. Well, good for you, little Johnny. That's wonderful. You know, they used to be 140 calories, but now they're six inches, 350 calories. Now here's the problem. Well, I think, we're getting fooled by portion. People tell me, I just had a bagel. All right, well, it's 350 calories. How many cal calories in a slice of bread? Somewhere between 70 and 90. Let's say 70. So how many slices of bread is this? It's five slices of bread. So if you say to someone, what'd you have for breakfast? I had a bagel. They go, okay. And if you say, well, I had five slices of toast. And you said, you're kind of a little piggy, aren't you? Five slices? And so the whole point of this is portion fools us and we eat more and we just don't realize we're doing it. Now, the reason we eat a bagel is because it doesn't have any fat. Great. What do we put on it? Cream cheese. A little tiny sliver of cream cheese? <laughs> no. We put it lump. We've got another scoop, lump, lump, another scoop, lump, lump. And then you have a five, 600 calorie bagel. And all we had for breakfast was a bagel. Do you see? That's my point here. I think we're being fooled by portion size. And then the cup of coffee years ago, I went back to Back to the Future when I went back to, it was at 55, I went back to, and, um, and, and I looked at the cups there and that's, I got some videos. I used to show the videos of that little tiny cup of coffee where he comes in and says, give me a tab. He said, I can't give you a tab unless you buy something. Well, give me a Pepsi free. He said, you're not getting anything free here, buddy. I said, well, give me a cup of coffee. And he gives him a cup of coffee. It's this sticky little cup of coffee. Okay, now we have these cups of coffee that are 16 ounces. Well, there's the Vente now and there's the Trenta. So it's a quart. You're just drinking a quart of coffee for breakfast. And I think people, we just don't realize that they've gotten bigger and bigger and, and we haven't noticed. So popcorn used to be big. I mean, it was 270 calories in, in this uh, box of popcorn, five cups, but now it's 11 cups. And you know, you go, <laughs> finance is against us also. You go into the, and, and to watch the movie and you buy some popcorn and they say, would you like the small? It's $20. And you can get the large one for $20 and seven cents. And you go, yes, give me the large one for $20 and seven cents. You can't eat the whole thing anyway, but because we want value, we, we do it. I've, done, I've sat at a, a movie theater and just eat popcorn. <laughs> and then the movie starts and I've eaten about half the popcorn already. Here's spaghetti um, a few years ago. It's 500 calories and, and here it is today. You know, they set that down in front of you and you go, oh my goodness, this is enough for two or three people. Let me see if I can eat the whole thing by myself. And then we eat it. <sighs> so we did a study with this. I, I think we'll talk about the study in the next uh, talk. We'll see if we do. Uh, one of my students did an experiment with this. And so the average burger is 330 calories. Back when they came out in the mid 50s, 60s. And then today, there are 590 calories. And then there's the Monster Burger with 1,420 calories. 
<laughs> we were on vacation one time and I saw Hardy's out in the Midwest and, uh, and goes looking because nobody, I don't want people to see me eating this thing. So I say, give me the monster burger. And so I got a monster burger and uh, I don't eat bread. So I took the bread off. <laughs> I ate the whole monster burger and I ate the whole thing and it was pretty darn good. 1,420 calories worth of good. Um, but when we do that, what people do is they, they have that. And do you think they say, I'll have a small fry with that? Probably not. So there's a small fry, 210 calories. Now this is, is 600 calories. So this is now a 2,000 calorie meal. And if you have a shake with that, the, the regular shake, the, the big one, it's another 1,000. So it's 3,000 calories. That's more than almost any human being needs to eat in a whole day. Now here's the problem. The big problem with food is it always digests. And so six hours later, you're hungry and you go, I, I had a big meal for, for uh, lunch today. I think I'll skip dessert. <laughs> and what you need to do is not eat dinner, not eat a snack, not eat breakfast, don't eat the next day until lunch to make up for the 3,000 calories that you ate. Okay. <laughs> Why do we do this? It's marketing. You get, we think, okay, we get a, a lot more for just a little bit of money. So we do this combo thing, get a value meal. And so we spend a little extra for the larger portion and we feel we've gotten a good deal because you know, we want a good deal on our burger. But my thought is, is it value to get more of something you did not need in the first place? Is that really a value? Well, this is what you get. You get an extra 600 calories at McDonald's, an extra 600 calories at Wendy's, an extra 590 calories at Burger King. If we eat one of these meals a day, just one with these extra 600 calories, and we don't compensate for it sometime later in the day, we can gain a one pound in a week, 52 pounds in a year. We can gain 3,570 pounds in a lifetime. What a deal that is. Well, my point is, is that we don't, <laughs> we don't need the extra calories to get the deal. Think of a deal when you're buying an automobile, uh, when you're buying a house, save 10,000, save 50,000, you know, not saving 50 cents on a burger. And then there's the monster burger. Well, that was the monster, this is the Riley burgers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> seven and a half pounds. So it's three and a half pound burger. And uh, if you buy this at Eagle's Deli and um, you get two pounds of fries with it. If you eat the whole thing in one sitting, it's free. So I thought, why not take the challenge? So if you Google Riley Burger Challenge, my videos will come up from about 10, 20, 15 years ago, and it shows me doing it. But I'll just tell you what it is. I start out and I say, I'm Jim Painter, and I'm going to take the Riley Burger Challenge and eat this whole thing. But the big deal is not to eat the whole thing, but eat the proper portion. I said, to help me, there's, and I pan back with the camera, and there's 16 dietetic students and, and uh, dietitians around the table. And I said, we cut this burger very sloppily, as you might add, into 16 pieces to give everybody a 300 calorie burger. And I said, if you're going to go to a pig out restaurant, make sure you have enough friends to get the right portion. <laughs> so here's the gulp at 7-Eleven. It was 20 ounces, 220 calories. Then it went to 350 calories. And then the super gulp went to almost 500 calories. And the double gulp went up to 600 calories. And now they have the extreme gulp. This, this would be great if you just use it in, in, in a barbell and just lift it up and gain weight. Um, it'll do that. But think of the calories in here. I don't even know how many are, it's like half of a gallon. Um, so you could use it as, as a weightlifting tool. So uh, I'm, I'm sure this isn't full. Uh, someday I was gonna think how, how many, pounds so you get a jug of, of water and it's like what like six or eight pounds and uh in a gallon how many pounds would that thing be it's got to be empty that guy's a big guy but he couldn't be lifting those hundreds of pounds in that thing so in new york city they tried to pass this law where you had nothing larger than 16 ounces and it was to go in effect about what 18 years ago or about eight years ago and um it fell down only because legally he was not the guy to do it. You had to do it this way. The wrong people did it. it has to go through legislature and, and they shot it down. But I like Mayor Bloomberg's try. It was an all out effort to try and have people eat <laughs> and drink smaller portions. So it's not just at restaurants. Even at home, we get fooled by portion. And um, so the Toll House cookie years ago, it's been the same recipe since 1949. What is that, 70 years plus? 
And the difference is it used to yield 60. It yield is 60 now. It used to be 100 when it was written in 1949. So it's the same recipe your grandmother used, your great grandmother used. But instead of making 100 cookies, it only makes 60. Why? Well, if you invite people over and give them the 100 calorie cookies, they'll look at that and think, why you cheap, cheap nothing. This is not a cookie. It's not even a bite. It's not even half a bite. I'm leaving. My friends are leaving. We're never coming over again because you don't serve food. You serve niblets. And so why, <laughs> why did, did they do this? Because this is what people expected. Now, the problem is, is that we don't know that that happened. And so we think we're getting the same cookie, but we're getting almost twice as much in every cookie because of the portion. I did a video a while back called Portion Size Me. Have you ever seen Super Size Me? So Super Size Me, I came out and what was the goal there? Every time he went to McDonald's three times a day, if they said supersize me, he did it. And I think he gained 20, 24 pounds in one month <laughs> and his liver almost shut down. He went to the doctor after a week and the doctor says, your liver enzymes are going up. You keep doing this, you're gonna kill yourself. Well, his body was smarter than he was. So then after that, he started eating and he'd throw it back up. So his body said, nope, 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 nope. You can't do this anymore. And it took him a few months to get his liver back in shape when he went to eating normal. But his goal was, is to shut down the fast food industry. Did it work? No, no, it didn't work. So they changed from super size me to value meal, to combo meal. Are they still there? Yes. The name is gone, but everything else is the same. So I was flying back and I saw that video on the plane coming back from Europe 15 years ago, probably. And I thought, you know what? Fast food's not the problem. Bad fast food is the problem. Too much fast food is the problem. So I was sitting with my wife. We were at um, Subway and we were eating a big salad. And I said to my wife, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to film you eating fast food for 30 days, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we're going to choose healthy foods, uh, use the right portion, and show people it can be done and eat out and be healthy. And what did she say? <laughs> she said, why do you have to turn everything into an experiment? I said, why can't we eat like normal people? And I said, we can't. And she said, why don't you have students? And I went, ah, oh, students. So I got these two students in my graduate program. This is Aaron and Ellen, who are graduate dietetic students in my program. And um, we did this video. And I think I, I'm not smart enough to put it in the PowerPoint itself, but here it is. You can actually get this online too. We can change our special series this morning. We are nation I find it funny. They interviewed me for, I don't know, five hours. And the first thing they pull is, sure, you can eat whatever you want, <laughs> which is not exactly the point of what I said. But it gets better here for just a second. This is online, too. You can watch it. I want you to watch very closely Aaron eat this piece of pizza. He is a shot throw on the track team, eats 6,000 calories a day, and he eats like a machine. Watch him put this pizza into his mouth. That would gag most human beings.
I felt so sorry for this guy. You know who he is? I went over to an acting studio in whatever, 2006, I think. And I got a bunch of actors to come over and do it. And do you know who he is? He looks like it anyway. I'm pretty sure he is. He's the guy on the blind side. So here's this big guy. He came and hold the spoon. He said, I felt so sorry for him. He finished his bowl and I said, do you want more? And he goes, no, I'm really fine. I said, really? You were the guy, you probably want more. No, I'm not, I'm not, okay. And so then when it got done, he saw these bowls come out and you could see the look on his face. He looked at me and he said, you cheated me, Dr. Painter, you cheated me. I said, I asked you three times. He said, I want more now. Well, so what's the difference? How come he didn't need more then? But when he saw he had a small bowl, he did want more. Uh, they ask a question to this young lady and she answers it very nicely. Now this answer is a good one. This is a great answer. <laughs> so <laughs> I went back to see Susan Copen, oh, a few, probably six months later. And when I did, she had just had the baby. And she said, I did all the stuff you told me. And she said, I lost like 40 pounds. And I said, 40 pounds? And she said, well, 20 was the baby and everything else. And I said, okay. But she said, I started doing that, trying to lose the extra weight that I had gained. And she said that she lost a great amount of weight. So you can actually get that. I'm going to try and put it up. When I was at a meeting this weekend in Albuquerque, um, I talked to Caesar. It was a young kid that's there doing the video. And he said, I saw your video on, on the web. And I said, it's not on the web. He said, yes, it is. I said, no, it's not. I said, it's for sale. He said, some kid pirated it um, in his classroom. <laughs> he put it up. So Caesar sent me the link. So I can send you the link and you can look at the video for nothing uh, online from what this little kid pirated. Okay. So the whole thing here is God does teach us about gluttony. You know, it says we're going to come to poverty if we're for a glutton, you know, the man who a lack of knowledge and so we're, we're actually destroyed for a lack of knowledge and the answer here is to think small and choose small that's the thing about portion hopefully i've convinced you of that i'm gonna go through this very quickly because we're already too much too long but i want to talk about the size and shape of containers and we'll do this quickly so this is a study done by my buddy brian wansink right here and whether you had spaghetti crisco or m&ms the, the bigger the package the more you poured out of it, you make your first portion decision when you buy the package in the store, think small when you're buying the packages at the store. 100 calorie packages seem to work for some. And uh, this is Brian's also. This blue shows that people who are greater than, uh, than uh, 25 EMI, this means that they're slightly overweight. And so for them, the 100 calorie pack, they ate this much. You gave them a larger pack, they ate this much because they're not eating according to satiety, they're just eating because they want to eat food. Now here's people that are of a, of a normal weight and they didn't matter if it was a hundred calorie package or not, they ate the same amount. So does this little package make a difference? Yeah, it does for people who have trouble stopping eating. There's lots of studies we have done on this, but he did this study with popcorn and they watched this movie, um, Mel Gibson's Payback. You can see these containers here. He had huge containers and very huge containers. And this is what happened. When he gave people the large bucket, they ate about 60 calories. When he gave them the extra large bucket, they ate 50% they ate more fresh popcorn. 
And so that's that's another point. If you're gonna, whatever you're dipping your hand into, whatever the package is at the store, whatever you dip your hand into at home, make sure it's small. Now he gave them 10 day old popcorn. And the thing is the same thing happened. They ate less, but if you gave them a bigger container, they ate 50% more. And this is 10 day old popcorn. How good is popcorn the next day? It's soggy, 10 days later, it's chewy, it's soggy, it's nasty, and people still ate it. And I asked Brian, I said, Brian, what happened here? And he said, well, this, the fresh stuff, they would eat it, eat it, eat it, and they'd be so stuffed, the movie would start and they didn't hardly eat anymore. And then in this one, they would eat and go, ooh, yuck. And then they'd wait a few minutes and put their hand in there, ooh, I forgot, yuck. And then 30 minutes later, they, ooh, eat it again, oh, and they go, oh, it's still bad. And they, he said they would just nibble on it all the way through the, the movie, even though it was nasty popcorn. My goodness, have small containers that you eat out of. Uh, he did this study with a tall glass and a fat glass. And he said to these children, pour eight ounces of juice into the glass. And when they poured in the tall glass, they stopped at five ounces. You, you notice this more than you notice this. So if you pour, they stopped at six ounces thinking they'd hit eight. Now with this short fat glass right here, they poured almost 10 ounces because they kept pouring, pouring, pouring in this fat glass. It didn't look like as much. So <laughs> if you want to have less, uh, have tall, thin glassware and you will pour less in and you will actually consume less. So here's Glamour. This is uh, many years ago, 2007. Uh, my students brought this to my desk and they showed me and it says, uh, using bigger utensils uh, that are trendy now can make you chew, chew, um, chow more, to more too. I guess, what does it say? Make you chow more too. I haven't read this obviously in a while. People who eat with smaller spoons tend to feel more satisfied after one serving than those with bigger silverware. So you do, you can, you, it's smaller, you eat it slower, you get satiated, you don't eat as much. And we showed that in our ice cream study. So the conclusion to this is, do you wanna eat less? Change the dining environment. Yeah, smaller glasses, smaller plates, smaller spoons, everything is smaller. If you, if you give your family a burger this big, and then the next day you give them a burger that's only this big, they'll go, you're cheating me, the burger's smaller. But if you give them a full bowl of cereal, instead of this big bowl, bowl's this big, and they eat the whole bowl, they don't go, man, you cheated me, where's my big bowl? Give me my big bowl back. They don't even notice it. And so they'll eat the whole bowl and they'll get just as full with a small bowl than they will with a big bowl. So you can change the utensils without people noticing it. You cannot change the size of the food without people noticing it. So this way you can actually get it done. So smaller containers reduce consumption, smaller packages decrease consumption. All right, I wanna thank my grad students because you know I always say we do this because we do it. And I should say they do it because I don't do it, they do the studies. And so this is uh, the students that, that did this study and worked on these studies for um, portion control. Okay, um, we're gonna put this up. If you have comments, questions, feel free to comment and then we'll, we'll continue this maybe this week or maybe next week with kind of a second half of things that help us eat less without knowing it. And, and then there's a lot of other things we wanna get into too. Okay, thanks partners, students.